Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. I'm Count Dracula. And today we're going to talk about Dario Argento's Dark Glasses. Yes, that's right. It's the year 2022, and Dario Argento not only put out a new movie, it's a new Jalo movie. Yeah, it's actually a return to form. Yeah. You know, probably the best he's put out in years. I would agree with that. Like, it is way better than almost any movie he's made post Stenhall Syndrome. Yep. Now, that being said, I think it's, like, pretty okay. I don't think it's, like, mind-blowing. I wouldn't say it's as good as Stendhal Syndrome. No, no. It's pretty good. It's not mind-blowing, but it's pretty good. It's an enjoyable time. It is completely worth a watch. It also, like... It's a Jello, 100%, is about a serial killer that stalks and kills sex workers. And we follow one particular sex worker and the events that transpire when this serial killer ends up, you know, putting her in their crosshairs. Um, but this movie has a very interesting element that I thought was truly unique for an Argento film. And that's the sentimental element because this movie isn't just about that sex worker. Correct, yeah. This movie is about that sex worker and this child she de facto adopts because of a traffic accident that leaves her blind and leaves that kid parentless. Yep. And the core of the movie is really the relationship between this kid and this blind prostitute. Yep. And it's legitimately touching. Like by the end of the movie, you find yourself going like, I want these two to make it work. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah. I want this kid to call her mom. I want this yeah. and that. <laughs> Even though technically the car accident they got into killed her mom, so he could easily blame her, but he doesn't. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's it's a very it's a very good. The, the the central drama is actually really good. Yeah, and in the middle of all this, you have a serial killer, a black gloved serial killer that we don't see the face of until the end, stalking and trying to kill her because she's the one that got away. Yeah, and it's also got that uh, that classic synth goblin style soundtrack. Oh yeah, the movie takes place 100% in the modern day, but the soundtrack will take you right back to the 70s. Yep, believe it. Now, the one element this doesn't have that old Argento films were known for is it doesn't quite have the same like super vibrant, colorful cinematography that you would find in something like Tenebrae or something right. like or uh, Inferno or Inferno yeah. or Suspiria. But there are nods to it in this movie. Yes. There's a couple scenes where like the main character is running down a hallway like it's fucking Suspiria or something. And even though it's not as vibrantly lit, you'll get like police sirens through the window yeah. giving you like echoes of red and blue. Yeah, yeah. This this one more than a lot of the other Argento movies tried to like kind of justify its color palette. Yeah, it did. You know? Because well, like it's, it's an interesting middle ground between what he was doing in the 70s and what he was doing in the early 2000s. Yeah. Because like in the early 2000s, he got kind of obsessed with going with a style that was like very David Fincher inspired. And don't get me wrong, Argento is 100% a great visual storyteller, especially if you go to his old films, but he was never quite well suited to the Fincher visual no, palette. No, no, no. Like there was a sort of grounding that Fincher has that didn't do Argento any favors. Yeah. And so it never quite fit with him. Whereas this movie is a nice middle ground between what he was doing with the 70s. Like a lot of the camera work yeah. feels a lot more like the 70s or 80s movies. But the color palette is a lot more similar to his early 2000s movies. Yeah. With a soundtrack that is very much like the old yeah. 70s movies. <laughs> Oh, there's actually a really cool moment with the soundtrack that I want to highlight because it's like it kind of highlights how cool the soundtrack is. There's a point where the soundtrack begins by matching the footsteps of a lady's high heels on concrete going down the street and then transitions from being her footsteps to being her heartbeat, heartbeat. Yeah. as she's being stalked by this killer. And it's a song. It's an actual like yeah. music cue, not like a sound effect. Transitions from that into a full on song, like yep. when the scene like hits its climax, so to speak. And it's a really cool, like small, brilliant moment. But I was looking at that going like, holy shit. This is the kind of artistry I kind of missed from our Yeah, own. yeah, we haven't gotten this from a long time. You know, it's pretty damn cool. Now, that being said, um, the killer plot is very easy to figure out if you're paying remote any remote attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in a way, it's a classic 
fucking jello in that. The movies just get to tell you who it yeah. is. Don't try to put it yeah, together. Don't, the murder mystery ultimately doesn't matter. Like, yeah. he's just faceless because it's a jello and that's what they do. Exactly. You know, yeah. like, what's really this is about is this is about the emotional connection between this lady and that kid, and you don't want to see them die to this killer. That's right. That's what it is. Another thing I really like about this movie is that he 100% brings back gnarly jello kills. Oh, yeah. You're like, everyone that dies in this movie doesn't just die. They die in a beautiful tapestry of death. Yeah. <laughs> God, that, that fucking initial car crash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, I was you watching that. You're like, I, I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say, I think that's the best car crash in an Argento oh, flick yeah. ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, one of the other things I think really works about this movie is that one of the things that bugged me about some of his early 2000s movies is he, he never made a smooth transition from the old italian films being dubbed oh, to them yeah. just being straight up filmed in english and so there's this really awkward phase in the early 2000s where some of his movies are filmed in english but it's very obvious that like half of the cast is not very good english speakers yeah. so whether or not they're good actors all their lines are coming across very stilted it's like um imprint by uh mike yeah because everyone's doing everything phonetically it doesn't it, it lands wrong. Mike has a, has a couple things there. Like the Sukiyaki Western Django did it intentionally. Yeah. You know, it's very much like that. Now, this movie, thankfully, was filmed entirely in Italian. So the performances are mwah. Yeah. They're great. And the dialogue does not feel stilted. Like some of the writing and the dialogue's a little weird and goofy. But the in the, the performance way performance doesn't feel. But bad. the performance doesn't feel stilted in the slightest. Like everyone feels like they're they're giving it their their the whole nine yards. Um, and in that way, it's almost like better performances than you would see in some of the old movies. Because in a lot of the old movies, you had like the disjointed nature between whoever was dubbing the person yeah. and whatever their physical performance was. Whereas this, you just get the full performance. Yeah. Yeah, you can just watch the subtitle and you're good. And uh, yeah, so Dark Glasses, like if you're a Jello fan, this is worth a watch. This is Argento coming back to form. I kind of hope he makes some more of these, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I haven't always been like a huge fan of Argento's more modern works, but this one really did work for me. I do think it has like, okay, I was really worried because one of the key plot elements of this movie is that the little boy isn't just a little boy. Right. He's a little Chinese He's boy. boy. Yeah. Like a little Chinese immigrant in Italy. And I was a little worried the movie was going to get a bit racist. Yeah, it doesn't. It actually completely avoids it. Yeah. You know, because there's, 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 the problem is is that you end up with you end up with some dialogue really early on where they kept referring to the Chinese boy. And like, like yeah, I'm and just, you're like, is that? Are we highlighting Italian people being racist, or is the movie racist? And you're like, oh no, it's it's it's, it's, no. it's highlighting the racism of the cops. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was it was intentional in that regard. But I was a little worried at first that it was going to be unthinkingly racist. If that yeah. makes sense. But it never actually crosses that line. Like the characters that are supposed to be racist are being a little racist, whereas the main character and all that. Like, it's just about the human connection between her and that kid, you know? Yeah. She lost her sight, and this kid fills in a void that is missing in that moment. And the kid himself, he just lost his parents. And this woman is willing to take him in and take care of him, even though she's not supposed to. Which is a pretty, yeah. that's another part, part of this plot, is that she's basically trying to dodge the cops while having this kid in secret, because the kid technically is supposed to be in an orphanage. Yeah, but she doesn't want him to end up in But she doesn't want to be in the orphanage, because let's be real, the orphanage fucking sucks yeah <laughs> it's one of those like catholic orphanages too so you just know it really yeah like, yeah sucks. yeah they actually demonstrate he's having a bad time in <laughs> oh this yeah place, you know when he's getting bullied by all those kids and yeah. the fucking like the fucking priestess the nun lady is doing nothing yeah, yeah. i almost said priestess oh, nun. <laughs> yeah yeah oh, i was like oh boy i can relate to that because like she she got she got the kid a switch and then all the kids just fucking took the switch now granted he didn't want the switch at first so like there's a little bit on him there but then once he wanted the switch back like come on give the kid the switch. yeah 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 yeah. Be, the kid just cool. lost his mom don't bully the kid that lost his mom yeah come on dark glasses it's pretty good i think it's definitely worth your time um it is also a shutter movie at this point i'm pretty sure yeah it's shutter so i think if you want to watch it right now you're gonna have to watch it on shutter I think it's not Shudder in some other countries, but here it's a Shudder release. But like with all Shudder releases, I'm sure it will get a home video release at some point if it hasn't already. Oh, I'd be surprised if it's not. Um, so if you would like to 
complete your Argento collection, uh, this is one that's going to be fit nicely with the rest of his movies. Yeah, it's going to be way better than that Dracula movie. That's true. The card player was always my least favorite. I actually kind of like his movie just called Jalo, but it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and with that said, let us move on to the spoilers. Spoilers, killer is a misogynist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, ki the killer is obviously a misogynist who's killing all the um, prostitutes. Like, I shit you not, because they think he smells bad. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason why he smells bad is because he works with, like, impounded dogs all day. So he's, like, covered in dog smell. But instead of just fucking taking a shower, he takes it personally that they think he stinks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I get it, I get it. Like, I get, like, like if you want to fuck a lady and the lady says, poo, you stink, it hurts. I get that. But I think it'd just be a lot easier to take that out by, like, fucking her harder than, like, yeah, trying to kill her. Yeah. Like, he decides to do. But yeah. obviously, he's a serial killer. What can you do? They're nuts. Yeah. Yeah, um, he, he doesn't have he doesn't have to make too much sense. And it's very easy to figure out that this is going to be the killer because there's not many other possibilities of who the killer could be in this plot. Yep. You have a couple cops. You have Asia Argento who shows up as like the um, the lady who teaches the main character how to like live as a blind as a lady blind person. Yeah. And you have the kid, and that's like, yeah, that's, you know, it's not going to be the kid. And like you know, that. it's not going to be the kid's parents because one of them's dead, and also the car accident happened because she was running from the serial killer. So <laughs> yeah, 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 K serial killer existed beforehand. Exactly. So it, it, the only other possibility could be it's one of her Johns, and it's obviously not the fat John she keeps seeing because it's a clearly a skinny person. Yeah, it's clearly a dude that can run a yep. lot, you know? So it's probably the skinny dude that she said stunk and called her a slut ran away. Who else was it going to be? Uh, yeah. Either that was going to be a straight up red herring. Or that was, it was him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But like, that doesn't really matter. What, what really matters is that this guy gets what's coming to him because she's got the best seeing eye dog on the goddamn planet because <laughs> dogs rule. So she gets a seeing eye dog really early on in the story. And one of the things they make a big point about is that this seeing eye dog will protect the shit out of her. There's a point in which yes. the seeing eye dog goes after the trainer when he's got the thing on and he takes the trainer. She takes the trainer down like hardcore. Um, so, you know, the moment this dog gets in the room with that killer, that killer going down. Toast. And the way the killer gets taken out in this movie is that he kidnaps her dog first off yeah this this bitch this bitch fucking kidnaps mm. her dog but then the dog the dog's a fucking genius yeah, figures yeah, out yeah. how to get out of the cage <laughs> and then if you remember in i think was it suspiria where the dude gets his neck ripped out by a dog oh uh no i think that was wasn't that phenomenon it might have actually been a fulci movie and i think about it if, you, if, if it's possibly a fulci movie it would be the beyond yeah because that dog does rip out its, its i just throat. distinctly remember that there is a movie an italian movie in which a seeing eye dog rips a guy's throat out right i i think that's the beyond well that happens in this movie yes he just fucking straight up rip, rips the guy's throat out and here's the thing argento kind of goes a little fulci with it by just watch having us watch the dog continue to eat his neck oh yeah and and <laughs> well, part, of the thing, to death. part of the thing i loved is it's the it's the cheesiest effect of oh, the God. movie it's clearly they just put like some meat down and he's just yeah, chowing yeah, down yeah. on some meat yeah <laughs> yeah, and 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 some and in some shots, it's really obviously like a puppet that yeah. someone's like. Yeah, when you see the shot on his the, the actual guy's neck and it's like gushing the blood. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, that's not a real dog. Yeah, it's cheesy as all hell, but I fucking love it. Um, but the thing that really impressed me with this movie is that by the end of it, when like Child Protective Services or whatever the Italian version of it is has to take the kid away and bring him back to his family in Hong Kong, you feel really sad because you've grown really attached to this th this lady. Well, yeah, the like they saved each other's lives like yeah. five times. Absolutely. And it's kind of funny because you expect because it starts off with, you know, prostitute and serial killer who kills prostitutes. You think he's going to go like blood and black lace where like the rest of the movie is going to be ladies taking their tops off and getting killed one by yeah, one. Yeah, it actually doesn't do that. No, no. Yeah. It's Although, fear not. I mean, yeah, yeah. there is boobage. Yeah. Like most of that stuff kind of happens towards the beginning of the movie um, before she's blinded and there's a lot more prostituting happening. Yes. But once you get to the point where she's blinded and she's taking the kid in, like it really does transition into being this kind of heartfelt surrogate family movie. Yeah. You know? 
like her, this dog, and sometimes Asia Argento is 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 like you know, Aunt Asia. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. The character has a different name, but you get what I mean. She's like the aunt, like who shows up, even though she's constantly telling the the main character, like you know, you can't keep this kid, right? Right. You gotta let this kid go back. It's this is, this is not gonna work. The cops are gonna come after you. Oh man, I really love the fucking scene where he kills the cops. Oh yeah. Like yeah, the fucking cop where I was just like, why did you keep standing there? What did you think was gonna happen? happen? <laughs> They just straight up gets fucking run over by the van, but he has like a fucking head start. He could have moved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Ah! I, I guess he thought. Ah! Yeah. I guess he thought because he was a cop that it was gonna the guy was gonna stop. But like, I mean, you guys are on the lookout for a serial killer. Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. And you've already got a gun. What are you doing? I mean, granted, these particular cops were there for the child. They're not part of the serial killer thing, but they know there's a serial killer. Yeah, they know there's a serial killer. Because the around. reason why they react to the van is because the serial killer they're looking for is in a white van, right? Right. So that's why they react to the van when they first see it. So they know that's what it is. So why do they think the cop was? Why do you think he was gonna stop? I have now? no idea. No. I have no. Fucking Dumb cops get what they have coming to them. <laughs> Move, bitch. Get, get out, out the way. way. Get, get out, out the way, way bitch. Get, get out the way. way. It's not going to blow your mind, but if you've, if you've been craving that giallo feel and you've pretty much seen all the big giallos there is to know, then... You know, check, give this movie a shot. Yeah, particularly if you like love Jalo so much, you love the dumb things it does. Yes, because you know. this has a lot of the dumb yeah, elements. It does, one hundred percent. Some of the melodramatic dialogue too. Oh yeah. Like even though it's subtitle, you could still feel the melodrama coming off the fucking subtitles. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? like, quick, overact right now. Okay, yeah, great. Yup, yup. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um. Yeah. So there they go. It's a, it's a good, nice lead hour and a half. Mm -hmm. More than worth your time. Good kills. Good kills. Um, you know, you like the main characters. You want them to survive from working ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good movie. Yeah. You know, a dog fucking eats a guy. Ten out of ten. What else can you ask for? <laughs> I don't know if what I would go ten out of ten. Ask for. I don't know if I go ten out of ten. It's probably more like a seven out of ten. But that's yeah, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like it's like it's like more than look, look. If you like Jalo films, you go love it. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. like I do. So I love it. Yeah. So work on that scale. Yeah. You know, if you're expecting something as good as Suspiria, not quite. Oh yeah. But it makes a bit more sense than Tenebrae. Yeah, fair. Fair you know, yeah. I, I always had that. Pro I love Tenebrae, but I always had that problem where I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. You know? Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> and where, the, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Counting Jack, on Twitch at Count underscore Jackula, where I stream throughout the week. But if you follow me on the Twitch or the Twitter, you'll know when I'm live. And you can also follow me on Satanic Jackula at the Instagram. How about you? Y'all know me, I'm The Horror Guru. You can find me at The Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up The Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. I don't know why I decided to go all preachery with it, but I just felt it, so I went for it. He felt the spirit. I felt the spirit <laughs> rising up in me. <laughs> and if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag dogs rule. Use the hashtag dogs rule. That way I know. That way Jack knows. That way the whole world knows you watch this vlog all the way through. Yeah, dogs rule, shallow killers drool. Oh, hashtag dog, do, okay. Hashtag dog, dogs rule, killer, what he said. Shallow killers drool. <laughs> I am losing yeah. my ability to talk. <laughs> so we are going to end this vlog here. Peace out, and I'll catch you all later.